Welcome to Rose City, the after show, the podcast where we dive into the world of the popular novel Rose City by author Karina Q. In each episode, we will be discussing a different aspect of the book from the complex characters to the intricate plot twist and everything in between. Check out Rose City on Kindle Valley to stay up to date as we explore unique perspectives and insights on the story. Good morning, ladies. How are you doing? Let's do a little check in. I'm doing great. I feel goofy today, so. Let's see where that goes. <laughs> well, these are kicking my butt, but I am working through it. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have my camera turned off just for a second. I'm changing the poopy diaper. Um, but you know oh, what? The weekend was beautiful. Um, I'm glad that I was able to get a lot of stuff done around the house and catch up on my real city. So, yeah, that's a blessing. All right. It's nice to see everybody. Yes. It's always nice to be seen, as I like to say. Um, the morning's going good. You know, it rained here a little bit. We'll see what happens. Like, the sky looked like it could be, like, clearing up, but keep your fingers crossed. All right. All so, right. anyway, so, if anyway. you hear some cats in the background, that's just my house. What happened? I was going to say Bella's in Tacoma too. I don't know where what it looked like where she's at, but over here on the north end, it's very sunny out. Um, cold, but sunny. Very, very sunny. So, that's all. Come send that sunny weather my way down south, please. All right, so we have an icebreaker for our lovely co-host this morning. And even if you want to jump in, as you're watching, if you want to type something in the chat related to this, let's do it. All right. So our icebreaker question is, why do people who do others dirty love to play the victim, honey? The victim. Alicia, I see your look on your face. Why don't you share with us first? Why do people, why do, people do folks I'm dirty? I'm going to try, try to, to keep the looks at the minimum. You know me. Um. They like to play the victim because they can't they can't face what, what they do. They don't want to take responsibility. It's a lot easier to point the finger than it is to, you know, look in and be like, you know what, I did that person wrong. And some people, you know, are just, my mama would say, just wicked, you know, <laughs> just wicked. They do folks dirty and then, you know, want to cry about it when, you know, they get busted out or whatever it is, but it's easier to point a finger than it is to look back. At least that's been my experience with people that's, you know, done me dirty and then turn around and I hear the story through other people, you know, you shouldn't have yelled at her like that. And it's like, well, do you want to know why she got yelled at? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I think that's why. Period, what are your thoughts? So um, I wrote, people uh, play the victim for various reasons, including gaining attention, avoiding responsibility, uh, eliciting sympathy, or manipulating the situation to their advantage. This behavior can also stem from a lack of self-esteem, um, a way to cope feelings of inadequacy or learned behavior where they were rewarded or they got the attention that they were seeking. Um, and so, you know, I feel like we see this a lot, you know, we've all seen this a lot, you know, <clears throat> and it's just people not taking accountability for what they did, like Alicia said, and owning up to it. And then they want the attention, you know, they don't want to be called out on their BS, you know, and then when you call them out and they're just like, oh, oh, but you did this and you did that. <clears throat> it's like, wait, hold up, wait a minute, you know, so I think. I think that's why um, I've, I've noticed in my life why people play the victim. Well said. Isabella, why do you think some people play the victim after doing other people dirty? I love this question. <laughs> um, my personal experience, um, I believe that a lot of people like to take away their guilt from a lot of the stuff that they've done. We're human and, you know, people feel it, whether they like to admit it or not. Um, 
And I think that's honestly a, a big part of um, why when people do dirty, you know, instead of just apologizing or saying sorry, they think, you know, they can just get over on people and just do what they want to. And I've gotten to the point where I let people have that. So, yeah, we don't focus too much on none of that no more. <laughs> I didn't take myself off mute. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I think the reason why people like to do other people dirty and play the victim is because they need to control the narrative. It has happened to me far too many times when something has happened and then it's like, oh no, this person did this and this and that and the other. And then they want to go and they want to tell it to other people. And they only want to tell like you know, what you said or how they felt. They don't They don't tell how they usually are the ones who initiate it. But when people are playing the victim, it's because they're trying to make you into the villain. They don't tell people, oh, I did this to this person or I actually provoke them or, you know, I, I ask questions to try to lead them down a trap because I wanted to see what the reaction would be. Like, have you ever had people just like ask you random questions? You know, like, it's kind of strange. And you didn't even know why they were asking you weird questions, but they were literally trying to trying to get something out of you. They were trying to, <laughs> how does this lipstick look on me? And you're like, it's beautiful. And then they just keep poking at it because they're like, well, I don't know, like if I could really pull it off. And you're like, no, you look gorgeous. Like everything about you looks beautiful. But they keep digging because it's like, they're, they want you to say something negative about them. And you're like, listen, babe, I don't, I don't think negative thoughts about my girls. I hype my chicks up. I'm not out here trying to like, actually it doesn't look good for you because the way your eyes look like no nobody's doing none of that but there are people out here and i mean that was something petty that happened to me so that's why i'm speaking about that particularly but no um people like to try to control the narrative they they will in the words of my mother they will throw a rock and they'll hide their hand because they're not bold about it they're not going to be like yeah i did that and i'm gonna stand on business i just don't like so and so and this is why and i don't care if y'all don't like it no they know what they're doing is wrong so since they know what they're doing is wrong, I'm going to play the victim. I'm going to be like, I didn't, I'm just Bambi. I didn't do, no, you did it. You did it, sis. You did it. So yeah, that's why it's really to control the narrative. They're manipulators. Any other further thoughts before we go on into our introduction? All right, folks. Um, well, let me open the floor. What were y'all thoughts on this chapter? Let me mute myself. Uh, I forgot how much showed his behind uh, in this chapter. We really got an insight at his hate part and his vow to because he unleashed that, that rage all over Malia. And I thought it was interesting because even Mike, Mike supposedly loves her so much. Um, and then when, you know, Chan's goon, as Elysia would say, uh, did, what, <laughs> did what they did, you know, that hate wasn't, that anger wasn't steered toward Chan. It was all for Malia. And I was just like, it's so interesting how people always take that approach. You're always angry at the person that didn't want you, decided to walk away, didn't do anything to you. You know, you choose that innocent person to to unleash the beast on, you know? And I feel, I really liked how you did that, um, you know, because we see that so much in our lives like you need to steer towards the people that that did you dirty you know um so i really like that touch um it's the coward approach for me um when they want to blame you instead of taking responsibility or blaming the other person sometimes they go for the easy target it's easier for me to blame you than it is for me to man up and deal with the mother guys because and lisa what were your thoughts Okay. Um, I, I, I know you guys are like getting like real kind of like deep and blah, blah, blah. Me, I thought it was hilarious. Um, I called Karina and I was like, I was in tears. Like when I read it, 
it was just so fun because I'm like, this guy is really gone. Like after just unleashing on her, you know, and saying she's beneath him and all that. And he's like, oh, I hope I didn't blow my chances. Like <laughs> while he's texting somebody else, Mike is the epitome of ass hole. Excuse my language, but I mean, every letter of the word asshole describes uh, Mike, and it was just, it, it was it was hilarious for me, so um, I read that, I, I enjoyed that, I enjoyed this book, you know, the whole story is funny, but I mean, that, that one was like where I've actually cried tears reading that mess, it was, it was, it was fun, Mike, Lord Jesus, help him, he needs, he needs the Lord. He needs the Lord for show. So. <laughs> Bella, what were your thoughts? And my add your curls, mama, are just popping this morning, baby. The beat on the face. It's the pearls, honey. It's the skin. It's the glow. I just had to add that. I was like, oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Y'all all looking good this morning. Praise God. <laughs> amen. Amen. Um, honestly, the whole thing with Mike was just crazy. But the part that really got me was the detective calling and he was still asking for Eva. That threw me. I was like, he don't give up. I mean, he just, he, he ain't got no shame. None whatsoever. Because you could tell that girl wasn't feeling him in the first place. And then you gonna keep trying it? Oh. Oh. We're a little bold these days. Yeah. So that was honestly my favorite part of the book. Because you could tell she was just not entertaining it. And he still was trying to ask her on cheek. Click. <laughs> Same. Me too, girl. <laughs> me too. So, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the aftermath after Chris sent his um, his unattractive little rodents <laughs> with faces burnt off to Malia in wedding uh, attire. This is the aftermath. This is after the detectives have gone to Malia's school and have asked questions and they found out, baby, Chris ain't Chris and honey. Well, look at the baby. Hi, baby. It's Auntie's baby. <laughs> Chris isn't who he says that he is. And now the detectives are having to tell Malia, watch your back, sis. We will find him. But he's off his rocker. He has been doing this to other people. He's scamming. He's stealing credit card information from other people who attend the school. Chris is a whole maniac. He really is. Um, while Detective Barker called to, to warn Malia to watch her back and to go follow a restraining order immediately. He gets excited thinking that Sarah, who answers the phone at the boutique, was Eva. And like Bella said, the man just won't give up. Like, sir, she, 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 don't, she don't want you. And even if she thought he was attractive, this isn't really like the proper place in the proper time. Her friend is being stalked by a menace and being sent threatening letters and um, dead rodents and, and, and dresses and, and tuxedos at this point. He's really not there. And you want to date. She is not entitled to entertain you. Maybe if you would have met her somewhere else, you would have met her out and about, she might have entertained you. This is not the proper place and the proper time. And I'm going to say, we all have experienced this working at the funeral home. People who should be mourning, <laughs> people who should be bereaved. Why are they flirting with the office staff? Why, why are they flirting with the uh, intern and bombers? Why are they flirting with the intern uh, funeral directors? I mean, hardcore. Sir, you just lost your wife. Or isn't that your grandmama? Like, it's not the appropriate, you know what? And I know people who know me are going to be like, I know you ain't speaking. And that's how you met your husband. Like, just have to. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I didn't want to be that one, but I was about to say, hold on now, because I, if I remember correctly, Mr. Q was grieving, and Karina don't walk by, and he, he no, Miss Kitty, that's going to be my wife. So, I love y'all, but that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm going to have to explain. I, I guess I'm going to have to explain. I call <laughs> But yeah, um, that's what happened with me as a I met my husband. His mother passed away and he told my mom I was looking quite nice. And I was like, oh, because he cute too, though. But what, what, what are we doing? What are we talking about? So that's what happened. Um, 
on, but sometimes this is not a- appropriate. And let me just put it out there. I have never dated a client. Like he's the only person I've ever dated. Uh, and then ended up marrying. Everybody else was kind of like, it's a lot. Your grandmother, okay, sidebar. We were at the cemetery. And, you know, like after everything is coming to an end and you're greeting the family, you're like, let us know if you need anything else. Call us day or night. I was leaving, um, I was walking out the cemetery and one of the, the grandsons for this lady who had passed away, she had a really, really big family. The grandson was like, yes, um, I hope I need some help. And I said, yes, sir, what can I help you with? And he was like, yeah, I'm gonna need you and I'm gonna need your phone number because you got what I need. So Oops, taken, sorry, sir. I was Mr. taken Q back. beat you to I the point. <laughs> I was taken aback, but yeah, that is a thing. And so we I've all had our fair share of somebody trying to come on to us. And it's like, you're not crying. You should be sad. You over here trying to make a love connection at a funeral home. And I, I don't know what to say about that. Um, we all have our stories. But anyways, um, Alicia, I almost told that other story about how me and you were on our way out the door and got tried to get called out by a hater. <laughs> I was just about to say, about. we had a boss about. that was a serious hater, and anytime we got any attention, she tried to find some way to shut us down, or try to make, I know in my experience, she always tried to make it like I was like some little ghetto hoe, or something. I'm like, sis, that is you. That Don't be putting your resume on me. <laughs> That's your j- Creep crush! You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm. All right. I'm done. I'm done. Do y'all see how Bella's screen is frozen? <laughs> Do y'all see Bella's face? <laughs> Say any names, but you know who I'm talking about. Mm. When when the haters when, come from inside the, the house, from the house, you know, it's like ugh, so unattractive as uh, Karina and. <laughs> All right, uh, the hater was in the family calling people out, trying to embarrass us in front of clients. Get out of here! Get your fast tail. Fast tail, and I'm in my. You fast know what? Tail. It's my I'm call cool, out because. That's not what we do. It, that's her life, but that's not what we do. So it's not a call out. It's her like literally just spewing lies, you know, oh, let me throw some dirt on them so they look a certain way. Like sit and it never, but you know, whatever. Yeah, she know, she know I don't, I don't mess with her. So. Mm. Mm. Went down a rabbit hole, but it was a good hole. Um. It was a good hole, eh? Yeah, so that's what happened. Malia had to call, um, well, the police had to call her, tell her about Chris. So Eva is like, Sith, I got you. I have called in an extra few girls to come in and, and work for us. I'm getting you out of here. You need to go home. You need to rest my sisters. She's here. She's going to drive my car. I'm going to drive your car. We're going to get you home. Eva's just taking care of her friend. Like, that's what a friend's supposed to do, right? So as Eva is, you know, getting Lily and her things together, the phone rings. The phone rings. And the phone rings and the phone rings. Guess who's on the line? Mike, he's upset. Um, he's still reeling from last night's events with uh, Mr. Kong's friends, you know, when he got that work. Mike calls Malia and he explodes. He let her know that she could never. Huh, Never. He let her know that uh, he didn't even know what he saw in her. Like he let her know that like he should have married Addison. That was somebody who was more of his speed. He let her know that there were other women in Rose City who were far more attractive, smarter, come from better families. Like you ought to be glad I even gave you the time of day. I mean, Mike ripped into her, and it was like the worst possible time. She's already going through the rat boy, 
Chris and all his foolishness. And then yeah, Rat Boy, right? And um and he and he got acid. So we need to be alarmed. Like, where did he get the acid from? And will he throw it on somebody? You know, we do have to ask questions. So anyway, Rat Boy, Chris has really upset her. And uh here comes Mike thinking that Malia has set him up to to catch a beating. He knew that that work came from Chan because they said that they was Mr. Kong's associates. So why is Malia catching the blowback? But Mike went insanely crazy. And um, I know a few people who act like that. Like Alicia called me last night. She was pretty triggered. And uh, well, I called her and we were talking about it. And I said, you know, Mike is a combination of like all these ugly, horrible human beings that I've had. Um, I won't say the pleasure, um, because it hasn't been a pleasure, um, has been the nightmare. I've had the nightmare of the running across. And so we just took that conversation and just rolled it up into what it is and Mike being abusive with his mouth. So uh, Eva and Malia kind of like, what are you talking about? Like that didn't happen. He was still talking crazy. He goes in on Eva. He lets her know about herself and why she's still single. Like, I don't think that men understand calling a woman single isn't the disrespectful thing that you think that it is. Why can't you get a man? <laughs> like, you're talking to a person who doesn't want to date. You're talking to a person who's not interested or is dating on their own terms. <laughs> I've just been single for so long. Nobody's doing that. You're talking to women at this point, baby. Being single for them is a flex, you know what I mean? And you over here talking about some... <laughs> Well, that's why you guys can't find men, you sluts. What? So you're going to try to disrespect her by telling her you're single. And she's like, I'm proud of it. You know? So it was just weird. Um, they got off the phone with him after tearing him a new one. And Mike did the craziest thing. I, and, I, and I've experienced people doing this. They go in on you. They cuss you out. They call you everything but a child of God. And then they're like, I hope I didn't go too far. And it's like, like, come on, you got to make it make sense. You can't go from zero to a thousand, you know what I'm saying? Like within one second and then be like, well, hopefully I didn't miss my opportunity with her. But he's saying all that while he's texting a chick in Seattle who's an IG baddie. <laughs> You're not in love. You want to conquer Malia. You feel like she got away from you, even though you threw her in the trash can. Now you want her back. And you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Because when Big Daddy comes back to town, all the chickens come flocking to the coop. Baby, Big Daddy. All right. Oh, all right. I think I'm done.